When it comes to the luxury crossover SUV, Lexus essentially started that segment with the introduction of the RX to the United States way back in 1998. It was a huge hit for Lexus, and it's consistently been the best-selling luxury vehicle in the United States. Now, surprisingly, if you needed something that was bigger than an RX that could carry up to seven people and all their stuff, the company's always been coming up a little short with they, when they first dipped their toes into the space back in 2018 with the RXL. It was a huge failure for Lexus because it really had a third row that couldn't even fit th uh, small children, and it didn't have much more cargo space versus the standard two-row version of the RX. Now, for 2024, Lexus is ready to admit their faults and introduce a vehicle that is finally going to appeal to American families. This right here is the brand new 2024 Lexus TX350. It's based on the just-introduced supersized Toyota Grand Highlander, and with about 10 inches of additional length compared to the standard RX, this model here finally has the size size and space that American families are looking for. So as you can see this week, Lexus has loaned us this 2024 TX350 uh, premium all-wheel drive, which essentially is the trim that most people are gonna pick. Uh, so the big question I wanna answer, if you guys have been waiting for Lexus to finally introduce a family-friendly crossover SUV, was the wait worth it with this all-new TX? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling of this first ever Lexus TX, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, kind of similar to the Grand Highlander on which it's based, Lexus does offer this model with three different powertrains, but let's start here at the base version here, which is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder. Now, if you guys have seen a lot of the newer Lexus and Toyota products, you're gonna be familiar with this engine. It is replacing the naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6. This is the company's new 2.4 liter turbo gas and port and direct, direct injection uh, four cylinder engine. It makes 275 horsepower in this TX350 and 317 pound feet of torque. Now, this is also the base engine in the Grand Highlander, but in the Lexus TX, it makes 10 more horsepower and seven more pound feet of torque. Now, your up step or the up level option from this this is the TX 500H F Sport Performance that essentially takes this engine and adds two electric motors, a separate electric motor at the rear axle, giving it standard all wheel drive. That model makes 366 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. That's a different review. And then there's a unique engine that isn't available on the Toyota Grand Highlander, which is the TX 550H Plus, which is a plug in hybrid V6, which offers 33 miles of range and over 400 horsepower. That's also a different review. Sadly and surprisingly, the regular hybrid powertrain from the Grand Highlander that makes 245 horsepower is not available on the TX. That should get the best gas mileage, but in this application, let's go back to this four-cylinder. This model here is rated to get 20 in the city, 26 on the highway. It has around a 17.8 gallon fuel tank, so you're looking at around 350 miles of range. Lexus claims this model is good for zero to 60 in 7.8 seconds. It has a top speed of around 112 miles an hour, uh, and you can still tow a maximum of 5,000 pounds. The TX is the biggest Lexus SUV ever, and as this car sits, it weighs in at just under 4,700 pounds, or about 100 pounds heavier versus the equivalent Toyota Grand Highlander. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, this particular one that I'm showing you is a TX350 in the premium trim. It's painted in nightfall mica metallic. So it's a very, very dark blue. You can see when the sun hits it, you can sort of see the blue metallic fleck in it, but from some other angles, it looks like it's a black uh, exterior color. You can see the headlights. All TXs come standard with the company's by LED, uh, full LED headlights, which include an LED low and high beam, LED daytime running lights. If you go for the luxury or hybrid trims, you'll get adaptive headlights, but this premium does not have that feature. For some reason, the, tri the premium triple beam LED headlights are not available on this car for now. Uh, you can see the grill. This is a new interpretation of the Lexus spindle grill, where it's kind of like a merger of the spindle body with this like functional crevice. That's what Lexus, Lexus actually calls this little mail slot that allows air to pass through. There's the sensor for the Lexus Safety System 3.0, Lexus logo there. And you can see the spindle portion's been kind of closed off with the integrated camera there and the integrated parking sensors. Let me know in the comment section below if you like the new interpretation of the grill. The premium trim also comes standard with LED fog lights uh, with some fake and functional vents. You can see down here at the front uh, grill, there's also some functional vents. But overall, some people have criticized this car for looking a little too much like a Grand Highlander. I have to say, I am a little disappointed by the exterior styling of the TX. If you go for the F-Sport Performance Hybrid, 
The car does look a little bit more aggressive with the F Sport front bumper, but in this trim here, it kind of just looks like I'm looking at a Grand Highlander, which is a good or a bad thing. I mean, some people prefer the more conservative lines. Now, moving around the side profile of the new TX, you can see this is a big, big vehicle. Uh, its wheelbase is 116.1 inches long, about nine inches longer than the old, or I'm sorry, seven inches longer than the old uh, RXL. And its overall length at 203 inches long is about two inches longer than the Grand Highlander and about six inches longer than the old RXL. So this is about the same length as something like a Chevrolet Traverse, a Buick Enclave, a GMC Acadia, the new version. So it's a big, large scale three row SUV. You can see the wheels. These are the standard 20 inch wheels that you get on the base trim and the premium trim. They have a multi-spoke directional look to them with a two-tone machine and gray finish to them. The brake rotors are 13.3 inches vented front and rear with a single piston floating caliper. You get an upgraded 15.6-inch uh, brake when you go for the F-Sport Performance hybrid versions or the hybrid in general. There's a 255 by 55 R20-inch tire, and you can still get a 22-inch wheel on this car, which you can't get on a Grand Highlander. It's only available on the luxury trim as part of a $2,000 option. You have a four-wheel independent suspension. No adaptive dampers, though, on this car. Only on the hybrid version, you get the adaptive dampers. Uh, and this vehicle has just under eight inches of ground clearance. And I appreciate the fact that the wheel trim here is painted. The mirrors are also body colored with uh, some chrome. These are power folding with integrated turn signals. You have cameras, of course, mounted underneath, underneath there. Uh, you have chrome along the window trim. You have chrome on the roof rails and you have a panoramic glass roof that actually does open, which is nice. And then backing away and looking at this angle here, you can really see the sheer size of this car. This is just a really big SUV, especially when you look at that third rear quarter view, it's gonna give you that additional space that you're looking for in the rear. Uh, and then looking at the uh, area at the back here, this is where the, the TX does have that Lexus look with the signature full LED light blade that goes across. It spells out Lexus in the back. There's full LEDs here for the reverse lights, turn signal and the brake lights. There's a TX350 all wheel drive badge and then no visible exhaust tips. There are dual exhausts underneath there. They're kind of tucked underneath the bumper, which is kind of the way everyone's going with these uh, modern uh, vehicles. Now, uh, looking at the cargo area, this is where the TX also finally delivers the space that consumers are looking for in this space. You can see the third row is standard. It only seats two people across. We'll get into the third row later on. Uh, with the third row up, with all the seats up, you get 20.6 cubic feet of total storage space. 20.6 is a pretty big amount. That's around uh, six cubic feet more versus what you got in the old RXL. There is a little bit of underfloor storage over here, uh, which is a nice addition. This power folding third row is also unique to the Lexus. You cannot get that feature on the Grand Highlander. It's a one touch. You just have to push and hold it for a second. And you can see when you fold down that third row, this is the way I suspect most consumers will have it. You get a max, or you get a, a total space here of 57 cubic feet of storage space. 57 is a crap ton of space. Uh, this is around 20 more cubic feet of space versus in the old RXL. In fact, the RXL, if you folded down all the seats, would deliver around 58 cubic feet of space. So this is essentially the same space with just the third row down that the old RXL had with all the seats down. If you fold down the second row, which as you can see, my tester has the bench, Lexus claims you have a maximum of 97 cubic feet. 97 cubic feet is around 20 to 25 more cubic feet versus something like the new Acura MDX, the Infiniti QX60. Uh, this is the same amount of storage space as what you'll find in like a Buick Enclave. So Lexus finally has supersized amounts of space in the cargo capacity. And this is exactly what, you know, families are looking for and that dealers complained about when the old RXL was out. So now let's move on to the interior of this 2024 Lexus TX350 Premium. Let me first show you guys the key fob for this vehicle. You can see this is the current Lexus Intelligent Access key. It does have the usual buttons here for lock, unlock, power uh, opening the trunk and panic feature. Lexus also offers a digital key function that you can use your smartphone through the Lexus interface app if you'd like. There's also a remote start from the fob. If I push the lock button three times in sequence, that will also uh, remote start the vehicle for you from the fob, which is a nice touch. You can see coming over to the door handles, unlike the Grand Highlander, which has a similar looking door handle, this has the digital latch door handle system, which means this doesn't actually physically move. Uh, you have to just push a little pressure pad there. That's what will unlock the door or open the door. Touch that little button there. You can see the mirrors will electrically fold in. And then if you touch the back of the door handle and push this little pad, that's what opens up the door for you. Now, looking at the interior, you can see my tester has the Birch New Lux interior, which looks good with the Nightfall Mica exterior color. You can see this is the faux leather material. These seats are heated and ventilated. They adjust in eight different ways with a two-way lumbar support, and you have three-person memory on the driver's side, which is nice. 
uh, the door panel materials, you can see this is a soft touch injection molded plastic. There's some soft new Lux leather here, padded over here, of course, the Mark Levinson stereo is an option, it's 21 speakers. It sounds fantastic for you audiophiles out there. Down here, you can see it's hard touch plastic with some additional storage. There's the little uh, button to open up the door. If you just push that, that'll open the door, or you can pull that twice in case the power's out. That'll also open up the door. You have a Lexus a metal kick plate there, which looks nice for the side sill, but overall, it makes a decent first impression. It just doesn't look quite as expensive or as luxurious as you expect a Lexus to look. Now, getting inside, with around 7.8 inches of ground clearance, this has a nice easy step in height as I shut the door. The door has a solid sounding thunk. Lexus does not offer a soft close feature for their doors. Now, starting the vehicle up, you can see the start stop button here is mounted high, which I like. Push the button, you can hear this is not a mild hybrid or a hybrid, so it has a traditional starter sound. The four cylinder comes to life and it has typical four cylinder noises. It's definitely not as smooth as the old V6 engines in the RX. Now, looking at the rest of this interior, you can see this is pretty similar to the interior that you'll find in the NX, in the RX, for example, although the dashboard design is a little different. It's very different versus the Grand Highlander. You can see uh, in terms of the dashboard materials, this is a soft touch injection molded plastic. It's also soft touch here. That's the Birch Nulux. It's kind of going from the door panel in a ribbon across the dash. Uh, and then my tester with the technology package also adds a heads up display. It's padded over here. You have some piano black accents. And then the steering wheel, you can see it's the same Lexus steering wheel that you find on the RX. It's a power tilt telescoping, which is standard. You can't get that on the Grand Highlander. It also comes with paddle shifters. That's the sensor bar for the Lexus Safety System 3.0. And then the horn, it sounds pretty nondescript, um, but also appropriate given the size of this vehicle. Uh, these Controls here are slightly touch sensitive where you can see they are linked to uh, the display on the heads up display. You can also change the way what that controls. You can do the same thing for the other side where it shows you in the heads up display. This is all great stuff. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, uh, it's pretty cool uh, technology. You can see the 14 inch display is standard, which is great. Uh, this is the Lexus interface system. You can see there's the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's connected. It has wireless over there updates. It's got your heated and cooled seat controls built into the screen. Although this portion here doesn't change compared to this upper portion. As you can see, the controls are always fixed. And then my tester also has the fully digital 12.3 inch instrument display. So this is actually optional. Uh, on the, on the premium trim and on the base trim, this is the first Lexus model to get the fully digital instrument panel. As you guys know, the RX and NX only have a seven inch display. That's standard, but I like the fact that this is now digital. You can slightly customize this. If you go into the drive mode selector, you can see it'll turn red. If you go to sport, eco turns it blue. And you can also go to a single dial if you don't like the two dial look. I prefer the more traditional design. You can also customize the inner portions there. If you kind of start touching the buttons here on the steering wheel, you can see it'll go to a different display for example, if I use that, you can see it shows different information. It'll get rid of uh, the actual two dials if you want to go there. Uh, I prefer, again, this look over here. I just think it looks more traditional and easier to read. Now, looking over here in the center console or the center stack, you can see traditional air vents. You have three USB-C charging ports. You have a 360 camera, which, as you can see, is included as part of a tech package that my tester has, which does a full 360 perimeter scan. It's perfectly fine. Uh, the graphics. Uh, this this view here is kind of useless to me. If I put the vehicle in reverse, this is a more useful view where it gives you trajectory, distance markers, front and rear cross traffic alert. It even has a, a washer for the camera in case it gets dirty. Uh, so that's pretty nice to have. Um, it does have embedded GPS. And then as you can see here, when you go to your vehicle settings, you can adjust all your different controls for driver assistance. You can show an all wheel drive display. This is all pretty much standard stuff from other Lexus and Toyota products. What this trim is lacking is the thematic ambient lighting. It doesn't have that feature. It's only on the luxury and hybrid trims. It does have a little bit of ambient lighting in the floor, but that's it. It's pretty dark in here. So I wish that Lexus would include the thematic ambient lighting on this trim, not just the luxury trim. You can see uh, I like this little wireless phone charging pad, which surprisingly it works every time I put my phone on here, it charges my phone. I feel like Lexus was listening to the criticism and they fixed the uh, crappiness of the old wireless charging system. You can slide that open. You can reveal a nice little hidden storage compartment, which is great. These cup holders also pop out where you can pull these out, clean them. You can also put them in the second row if you have the captain's chairs. Uh, you have a little bit more of your 
Drive mode selections over here, you can see this is like activating a trail off-road mode. Uh, there's a downhill assist control, auto start, stop defeat, stability control. But if you want to adjust your drive modes, you have to go into the screen here and click the car icon. I don't love that um, to adjust the drive modes. I would prefer an actual button. Lexus started doing away with that. With the RX, it's the same thing here. And the TX, which is annoying. Uh, over here, you can see on the center console, there's a little bit of plastic here that kind of reminds you this is based off of a, off of a Toyota. But at least here, it's nice and padded. Here, it's padded. You know, you have some softer materials here and nice materials here. So there are some touch points that remind you of a Lexus and then some touch points that remind you it's based off of a Toyota. You can see padded center console here where it opens up in two different levels. It's pretty deep, actually. I've got a ton of my camera gear uh, stored away in there and it's hidden up. Uh, this is nice padded. The seats are also very comfortable and supportive. Uh, the heated and cool function works really well. This is an eight-way power with two-way lumbar on the passenger side as well. Open up the glove box. You can see it's big. It's a bin style. It's damped and it's lined with felt. Uh, you have a digital camera rear mirror that's included as part of the tech package. This is a must if you plan to carry people and stuff to the roof. And then there's a woven material here. You can see there's LED map lighting and then a big panoramic glass roof. This actually opens, uh, which if you push this button, you can see it tilts up or it opens up completely over the front seats, which is great, lets in a lot of light. Uh, so no, some competitors don't offer the opening function, but this is really nice with the power retractable shade. Uh, but overall, you can see the interior has most of the luxury and tech features that you want. It has good visibility. It's got great build quality. It just doesn't have a design that stands out as luxurious. So if you guys are looking for more of that, you may want to check out some of its competitors. Now, moving on to the second row, as you guys know, this is a family SUV. So this is an area where a lot of consumers are going to be checking out the TX very thoroughly. And I have to say, this model here, as you can see, is equipped with the bench seat, which I actually haven't had a chance to see until Lexus dropped this off. Uh, the hybrid versions only come with captain's chairs, which is nice, but it limits the seating capacity to six. As you guys know, the third row only seats two across. You can see with the bench and this Birch Nulux interior, it looks good. It's very wide, so you can actually fit three people across three average size people. If you're a little wider, it may be a little bit tight. Uh, in terms of the materials, you can see the upper door panel here is slightly padded. It's a little harder plastic here. There's a manual retractable sunshade, which is nice. You have more of that Birch Nulux here and soft leather over here. The Mark Levinson stereo also makes itself known with the badging here on the back door. You can see it's hard touch plastic here. You still have the digital latch door handles and whatnot. Uh, and then in terms of the legroom, Lexus claims you have 39.5 inches of legroom, which is around an inch to two inches more than the Acura and Infiniti competitors. So that's definitely nice that Lexus gives you that additional space. Now getting inside, you can see for somebody my height, it's pretty easy to get in and out of this vehicle. You can see shutting the door, the door still has a nice solid sounding thunk. And then once you're back here, this seat does give you the ability to slide forward and back. So if you need to give third row passengers more space, you can basically slide it all the way forward to where my knee is hitting the front seat. This is where I have the seat to drive. So you can see in terms of space, I can get back here and cross my legs. There's a ton of under four foot storage. The floor here is uh, almost completely flat, which is nice. You have your own separate climate control. So it's three zone. However, the premium does not offer heated second row seats um, or ventilated seats as standard. You have to go for the captain's chair option, which will roll in the heated and cooled seats. The luxury trim includes heated second row seats with the bench. But if you want heated and cooled second row seats, you have to forego basically the bench seat and get the captain's chairs, which I kind of wish that Lexus would just offer it with or without the, the captain's chairs. Uh, but without it, you can see you have two USB charging ports. You have some storage over here. Uh, I like how there's you know separate controls. There's these two storage cubbies in each of the front seat backs. And then if you wanna fold down this armrest, you can see it gives you two cup holders. And this is a pretty nice place to spend time. Your rear seat air vents are actually located here on the, the ceiling, which is nice. This panoramic sunroof, you can see, lets in some nice uh, light. And then in terms of the headroom space, if I sit back, my head is still has a good few inches of space. So. Uh, for somebody my height, it offers a ton of actual room. I love these manual sunshades because right now I have the sun kind of beating on me, so I can kind of close that off to give me a little bit more shade. Uh, but overall, you can see these seats are comfortable and supportive, and I like the fact that Lexus does offer the bench even on the top luxury grade. They just need to offer it on the hybrid trims as well. Now, getting into the third row area, Lexus makes it pretty simple. Now, uh, obviously, if you want to get back here, there's no pass through in the middle. So you have to push this button here, push and hold it. But once you push and hold it, you can see the seat kind of slides forward. It's hydraulically assisted. This is pretty similar to uh, what Acura and Infiniti does on their luxury SUVs. And then in terms of the third row space, you can see Lexus says they decided to go with just two people across for additional comfort. It could do three like the Grand Highlander. So I'm surprised they don't at least give you that option. But getting back here, you can see Lexus says they, de they designed the TX 
basically with adults in mind. So as you can see, this is with the seat all the way back. As I get back here, uh, you can see there's good foot space. My knees also aren't touching against this rear seat back, which is nice. This is with it all the way back. So uh, this actually has a pretty good amount of space. In terms of features, you can see there's USB charging port, another one here on the other side of the vehicle, there's also a power recline function for the third row uh, because of the fact that this has a, rec a recline, uh, a power reclining third row or power folding third row. That gives you additional comfort. You can see this is also nice and padded here. You have a cup holder storage area. It's hard touch plastic here, but this larger window does let for some nice views. There's also third row air vents, which is something you don't get in something like the Acura MDX or the Audi Q7. So like the fact that Lexus thought of that. And then in terms of the headroom space, you can see when I sit all the way back, my head does not touch the ceiling of this car and it doesn't touch the ceiling anymore here. So this is good in terms of headroom space. So again, if you are under six feet tall, this third row is finally a commodal or a hospital for adults. So you can actually fit adults back here. But if you're a little bit taller, you may find the headroom a little bit lacking, but overall Lexus should be very proud. There's around 33 and a half inches of legroom back here, which is around five to six inches more versus in the MDX and in the Infiniti QX60. So here we are back in the all new Lexus TX. Now I'm really happy that Lexus sent me the TX350 because this is the one powertrain that I didn't get a chance to drive out in Texas when I first had a chance to drive this vehicle a couple months ago. It is the base engine, the one that Lexus plans to account for most of the TX sales. And it's been a while since I had a chance to drive this new 2.4 liter turbo without the electrification. This is a replacement for the naturally aspirated V6. And I have to say, first impressions for the TX are pretty good. I mean, yes, the outside of this car kind of just looks like a Grand Highlander, but the ride quality of this premium trim with the 20 inch wheels is really good. The visibility is also great. The car just feels really solid. And with 275 horsepower, 317 pound feet of torque, a really high torque rating actually. Uh, Lexus claims this model should get to 60 in 7.8 seconds. It weighs around 4,600 pounds. And let's go ahead and see what we can get in our actual testing. It's around 35 degrees outside, which shouldn't make a difference. This model here is all wheel drive. It's in sport, we'll brake torque it. All right, zero to 60 in 7.4 seconds. That's not bad. I mean, that's about 0.4 seconds quicker versus what Lexus claims. Uh, and it is about a second slower than the NX350 that I tested on that same stretch uh, about a year and a half ago. Keep in mind, the NX is probably around 800 pounds lighter than this car. So 7.4 is acceptable. Uh, and remember this, competes with the base engines you're going to find in like the Acura MDX, which is a naturally aspirated V6. The Infiniti QX60 also has a naturally aspirated V6. Those models have more horsepower, but significantly less torque. And that's the whole point of by going with this uh, Turbo 4 is you get way more mid-range torque at a much lower RPM where you don't have to rev the engine out. But let's try it here without brake torquing at this time. I'm just going to floor it and see what we can get. Seven point seven seconds there, so that's with it more slowly uphill, without brake torquing it. So in the real world, you're going to get around seven and a half seconds to zero to sixty, which is perfectly acceptable. Is it the, among the quickest accelerating SUVs in the class? Absolutely not. You're going to get more power uh, versus a lot of its competitors. Quicker acceleration times. I believe even the V6 MDX is probably about a half a second faster than this car, but that doesn't always tell you the whole story with the zero to sixty numbers because I had a chance to drive this vehicle on a very long road trip. I put about 700 miles on it in the last few days uh, going up to upstate New York with five people on board and all of our stuff. We had it packed to the roof of this vehicle. And I was very impressed with this powertrain. It offers plenty of power. I mean, just put my foot down slightly there. The eight-speed auto is smooth and responsive. I've actually been really impressed with the eight-speed auto. It doesn't, it doesn't hunt for gears like some of the 10-speed autos. It's really quick at just choosing the right ratio that puts this engine in the meat of its power band. The 2.4 itself doesn't have the best sound. It can sound a little bit thrashy at times, especially when you're really pushing it. I mean, the sweet spot of this engine is between 3,500 to about 5,500 RPM. You're going to feel plenty of effortless power. And uh, the engine itself is smooth, at least. It just doesn't sound super great. But again, putting my foot down here just slightly, the acceleration just kind of pushes you back. The wave of torque pushes you back in your seat. And this car feels nimble. It feels light on its feet, which is what I wasn't expecting to find in a base model or a base engine, you know, vehicle 
or base engine powertrain for this car. It, it feels pretty good. Now, the all-wheel drive system is a torque vectoring system. You can feel it send power to the rear axle and side to side at times. It's nothing like Acura super handling all wheel drive, but this is actually a mechanical linkage between the uh, engine in the front and the rear axle at the back. Remember the hybrid version of this car just has a separate electric motor. There's no physical connection between the turbo engine and the rear axle like there is in this car. So you get a different kind of all wheel drive system when you go for the gas only model. But let's go ahead and try it here. I'm, not, I'm just gonna break, I'm just gonna floor it. I'm not gonna brake torque at this time. It shifts at around 5,900 RPM. Wow, 7.3 seconds there. So brake torquing, it actually slows the car down. Just find yourself a level road, floor it, and you'll do it in 7.3. So that is perfectly acceptable. And I think most people are gonna be uh, satisfied with that level of performance because remember, you don't do zero to 60 times in this. You just drive it around town, drive it on the highway. And this is where the engine is really good. I mean, I haven't had a chance to really drive this engine in the, the Highlander or the Grand Highlander, but I think Lexus has done a good job with making this powertrain work with this whole you know car. Now, in terms of the rest of the driving characteristics, I can see out of the vehicle really nicely the seats in this car. These are just the new Lux seats, not the premium semi-aniline leather seats, uh, and they're very comfortable and supportive. I can suffice to that because I drove this car again on a four-hour road trip one way, so about eight, I spent eight hours in this car and the seats, I never got out of this car feeling like I was aching or in pain because they're really well shaped, they're comfortable and supportive. The heated and cooled function works well. The heated steering wheel works well. The digital camera rear mirror is fantastic for when you have stuff piled up to the roof and you have the car full of five or seven people, which is great. Um, the heads-up display also works nicely. This car also has the tech package with the surround view camera, and it has Lexus's safety system 3.0 with their traffic jam assistance. The adaptive cruise control works really well. It steers you in the lane. It doesn't allow for true hands-off driving, uh, except when you're at low speeds below 25 miles an hour. The traffic jam assist allows you to do that in traffic, but on the highway, it doesn't do the hands-off system like you could find in some for like the GM Super Cruise or the Ford Blue Cruise, for example. But I think Lexus is eventually getting there. Their driver assist has really been improving over the years. Uh, and uh, in terms of the noise in this vehicle, it's also very quiet. Now, is it quieter than a Grand Highlander? I'm not entirely sure. I need to drive a Platinum 2.4 gas only Grand Highlander back to back with this car to compare. But on that long road trip, there was very little road and wind noise, just a little bit of engine noise when you pushed it. Uh, in terms of squeaks and rattles, this is an actual production car and there was a tiny little rattle coming from the sunroof. Now you could fix that by closing the shade, but I was a little disappointed to hear that especially in a Lexus product. Uh, and in terms of the fuel efficiency, this is where some of you may be wondering, should I go for the hybrid model? Now, I've tested the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max Platinum and that got around 25, 24 MPG in my mixed driving. In this car, I was averaging around 18 and a half in mixed driving. On the highway, the best I could do was around 24, uh, I'm sorry, 23 MPG, which isn't wonderful, but this car also is fairly new. It only had 1,100 miles on it when they dropped it off. Right now it has around 1,800 miles on it. So I suspect if you break it in a little bit more and you drive it uh, you know, in less crazy conditions where I had it with a full load of people and stuff, it should be able to get closer to that 26 MPG. I mean, 23 was perfectly acceptable. You have an 18 gallon, just under 18 gallon fuel tank. Uh, and the trip computer at max was showing around 310 miles of range on a full tank. Now that is ultra, conservative because uh, when I filled this car up when it had only like 18 miles of range left, it still had three gallons left in the tank. So I'd say you could do around 350 miles right now on this particular car on a full tank, which isn't wonderful. The hybrid is gonna get you a little bit more uh, range. Obviously you can get around three to four MPG better. The plug-in hybrid TX is the one I'll, I'm hoping to get my hands on for a week later on. That's the one that'll get nearly 30 MPG. That, that gets the best gas mileage and it gets uh, supposedly the most power and the most range because of the plug-in hybrid portion. But overall, the TX as a family luxury SUV, I think it drives really well. It, it has the Lexus quality that you're expecting. The driving dynamics is more on the vanilla side. The interior styling is definitely more on the vanilla side. I wish Lexus had done a little bit more to give us more uh, in terms of just luxury feel. Although it feels nice when you touch it, it just doesn't look uh, very impressive, but overall, if you guys are looking for the ultimate family SUV and you must have a Lexus badge, I can confidently say that Lexus finally has a competitor or at least an entry in this segment that's going to appeal to you.
So after spending a week with the biggest Lexus SUV that the company has ever created, I have to say, just like the Grand Highlander in which this is based, I am pretty impressed with the TX as a family vehicle. As you guys know, the old RX was simply too cramped and too small for any type of family. It couldn't even accommodate children in the third row. And that has been effectively corrected with this TX. As you guys saw, the third row can comfortably seat adults that are around six feet tall and under, I, I would say. The second row also offers a ton of space. Love the fact that Lexus offers the second row with a bench seat, even on the top luxury trim. However, if you guys want the hybrid, it only comes with the captain's chairs, which does limit the seating capacity to seven. I also have to say, in terms of the styling of this vehicle, while it may not be everybody's cup of tea, I mean, it is very inoffensive. There are times where I look at this vehicle and I think it looks a little too much like a Grand Highlander. And that's really where I see a missed opportunity for the Lexus design team. They could have made this car stand out and look a little bit more bold. And I have to say, if you guys are looking at the TX500H F-Sport Performance, the hybrid model, that does look a little bit more unique with the 22 inch wheels, the F-Sport body styling, the adaptive suspension. So I would say if you want the more interesting TX, go for the hybrid, but just know the hybrid does come with some compromises in terms of if you want seven passenger seating and you want a little bit more of a comfortable ride. Because this model here, as I mentioned, I took it on a long road trip and in I filled it up with seven people or with five people and all of our stuff, and it just did it without breaking a sweat. The 2.4 liter turbo offers plenty of power. Uh, and while the zero to 60 time of 7.3 seconds isn't impressive on paper, in the real world, I found it had just enough power for me and probably enough power for about 90% of people who are going to buy with this vehicle. I do I do want to eventually get a hold of the hybrid model to test out the fuel efficiency and test out the performance in that to see if it's worth the extra $15,000 price increase. Uh, and in terms of the handling, this model here is the more comfort oriented trim. And I think most buyers are going to appreciate that because I found the ride quality to be comfortable, the build quality to be impeccable, and the interior, while it isn't the most flashy, it has the latest Lexus interface system. And when you start touching the touch points, the leather materials also feel really high quality. The seats are very comfortable and supportive. They're some of the best seats that I've tested in this segment. And for those of you who actually need to use this vehicle as a family car, compared to the MDX and the Infiniti QX60, this model here is around five inches longer and it offers around five to six inches more legroom in the third row. So this is definitely the more family friendly option. Now, if you guys are looking to put a new TX in your driveway, what's it going to cost? Because this vehicle is on sale now and Lexus does charge a premium, obviously, for the TX versus a Grand Highlander. You can get into a Grand Highlander for around 45,000 bucks for a base XLE. The TX is around $10,000 more. This car starts at around $55,000 for the base version with front wheel drive. At all wheel drive, it's gonna cost you a couple thousand dollars extra. This premium that I'm showing you is around $60,000 base with the options that my tester has, like the technology package, the convenience package, the cold weather package, uh, the Destination Charge and the Mark Levinson Premium Stereo. My tester here comes to just over $64,000. I know 64 grand sounds like a lot of money. I mean, you could essentially get an MDX Advance for about the same price. The Infiniti QX60 is also around the same price. Compared to the base prices, the TX is about $5,000 more than the MDX, but I'd say it's worth it considering the extra space that you're gonna get with this car. I think that's going to be worth the extra price premium because premium, the MDX is a little bit on the small side now that the TX is out in terms of family friendliness. Uh, just also keep in mind, if you guys want the hybrid, the hybrid starts at around $70,000. A fully loaded TX 500H F Sport Performance Luxury is around 77 grand. We don't have final pricing just yet on the plug-in hybrid model. Uh, which I suspect will probably be in the $80,000 range. Is this car more worth the extra 10 grand over the Grand Highlander? That's gonna depend on you because the Lexus version is around $10,000 more. It basically includes features like nicer leather. It includes the 14 inch display. Uh, it includes um, the power folding third row, the power tilt telescoping steering wheel, the Mark Levinson stereo system, which is about double the speakers of the Grand Highlander. So if those features matter to you, along with the fact that this is a Lexus, you get to go to a Lexus dealer I'd say it is worth the extra $10,000 premium, but if those features don't matter to you and you just need something family friendly, I'd happily say just check out a Grand Highlander. That's a better deal. But if you're going to compare it to its other luxury rivals, the Lexus is well priced, but just keep in mind that uh, some you know, mainstream brands offer similar luxury and technology and similar space. So you do have to actually like the fact that you're getting a Lexus, a luxury brand to actually choose this vehicle. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Lexus TX350. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.